Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Today we're focusing on an organization that helps many people in our community, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, Jasper Newton County. Joining me, Greg Spink. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me here. You have a local office here in Joplin and you're serving a specific geographical area. So let's start if people ask you for an explanation. They say, well, what is Big Brothers Big Sisters? Big Brothers and Big Sisters is what I love to tell people, we're the gold standard of mentoring. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we believe that mentoring relationships change lives. And so we plug people into mentoring relationships, but it's not just we want a big and a little to be friends or an adult volunteer and a mm -hmm. kid in our community in trouble to be friends. We want to set life-changing goals. And so we sit down before the match ever starts with mom and dad, uh, with the kid, and we establish some goals and then some steps we think they should take in, in, in the process to get there before they're matched, the big and the little, we sit with the big and say, hey, these are the goals that have been set. We wanna to try to achieve these goals. Do you think you could help us make that happen? And so then every month, we have a case manager assigned to every match, and this case manager follows up with the parents mm -hmm. and the little and the big and says, hey, what steps were taken this month? What do you see in progress? Are we meeting our goals? Are we taking steps to get to meeting our goals by year end? And so there's some follow-up. So we measure what matters and what matters gets measured. It's what makes us the gold standard in the mentoring relationship business. So there was really a plan in place, a purpose as you go it's, into it's these. It's a very intentional relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you this, Judy, this is, when I was in college, I got involved in Big Brothers and Big Sisters as a big, I volunteered. Mm -hmm. And I got connected with a little, and that was in 19, none of your business several years ago. <laughs> right. uh, but we are still connected. In fact, I mm. was a pastor for several years, ended up doing his wedding when he got married wow. and have walked with him through some of the best and worst days of his life. And we continue to stay connected. He knows my wife, he knows my kids. Uh, we all have relationships and we've been in contact now for over 20 years. So you really impact someone's lives. through. Oh, I, I, I believe when well, you do it right, that's what happens. Right. Well, you're serving Jasper in Newton County. So explain how you're part of a national organization, but you're specifically here in this corner of the state. Big Brothers and Big Sisters has over 400 offices nationally uh, here in the United States, and so we are one of those agencies. Okay. So we specifically target Jasper and Newton County. Now, if you lived right outside our county and didn't have an office that was close enough to get to you, mm -hmm. we would certainly serve you. But our target really is Jasper and then Newton County. Okay. So we want to, to grow. We started with seven matches in Joplin when we got here to start with. We had seven matches that were handed to us from Springfield that mm -hmm. were in the Joplin area. And, and so we wanted to start with, we figured once we get ourselves networked in Jasper County, we can overflow and grow into Newton County. But growth has been just explosive. It's been crazy. Great. So are you part of United Way organization, that type of support as well? We office at the United Way. Okay. Uh, we would love one day to be back uh, with United Way. Okay. Right mm -hmm. now we are not. Mm -hmm. When we went to Springfield, uh, we cut off our funding with United Way here, in, here locally. Area. Mm -hmm. And so we are hoping to, to work our way back into that. We love the United Way and what they do here in Joplin. And they're a great agency to partner with. So if we could connect with them, that'd be fantastic. We hope to do that soon. But that's where they can find uh, your office. Is that the but United that's Way building? They can find our office in the United Way <laughs> building right now. Yes, ma'am. We're at 3510 uh, East 3rd Street here in Joplin. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, the organization itself, people are wondering, you said you started off small and has grown tremendously. Let's give some numbers, some information like, like that. Well, uh, we started off with seven people mm -hmm. when we started here in Joplin in January. Uh, we became our own agency, I guess, technically in December. We got our agency ID and mm -hmm. our, our 501 c 3 then in January, I was hired uh, as the executive director. In March, we hired Hazel as our case manager. Uh, we went from having seven kids uh, to the start of next year when school, when we get back into school in January. In January right? We'll pick up kids from the Joplin schools. We're partnering with Bright Futures and, and mm -hmm. Joplin Public Schools, and we're super excited about that. We're partnering with the court systems and the people in our community, but we will have over 100 matches mm -hmm. uh, in January that we'll be working with. Uh, so we're in a place where we're looking to hire our third employee and other case manager mm -hmm. uh, because we manage all of our cases. So you have to have somebody help to work together with those pairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Working together. So starting in the growth, explain how, I guess let's take through the steps, how do you find the youth, the youngsters, the people that are involved? And I guess people might say, what age do they become involved too? The youth are easy to find. They typically come to us and, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it comes to a family crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, my little, for instance, when I was in college, my little uh, was a kid that whose parents had gone through a terrible divorce. Mm -hmm. and. So you got a single mom now with a son, and she wants him to learn how to be a man. So she and needs so a father figure. She needs in a his father life. figure to step in. Well, I at at 20 years old probably wasn't much of a father <laughs> figure, but I was better than nothing, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, but through the years, we built a great relationship and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and helped with that. And so uh, I think that you know uh, we kind of think that second grade is is a really good starting place. Okay. Second, you know, first second grade. Uh, if they're 16 years of age and not matched yet. 
we typically, that we would do those on exception. That would be an mm -hmm. exception that we would make. Right. We do it, but it's not the general rule. Most kids, by the time they're 16, have made their decisions. But See. the kids are the easy part. They tend to just come. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them get referred to the court system. Some of them get referred to the school systems. Some of them get referred by neighbors and friends and people who know about Big Brothers and Big Sisters or who have been impacted by right. it. Uh, where we, you know, the the bigs are the ones we have to go recruit. We hope they see shows like this and Volunteers say, hey, we want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. How do we do that? And right. and they sign up and get involved and, and change a kid's life forever. But the cool thing is it's not just, we talk about the lives that's changed with the kids, but we're not just changing kids' lives. We're changing the life of the volunteer. They find out once they get involved that their life gets changed. And then mm -hmm. the parents, uh, their lives get changed. And then you're talking about really impacting not just this generation, but generations to come. Because this little will grow up one day and be an adult and they'll be a better adult, and they'll be a better citizen, and our community will be a better place. And you get to be a part of all that on the ground level. So it grows throughout the system. So Absolutely. Far. So is there an application process for, let's start with the youth or the young, you know, as far as if they come in and say, that single mother has a child and says, I want somebody to help work with them. Do they go through a process of there, applying? Or? Yes, there is a, a detailed application process because we don't think that best matches just happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you would apply for that, you'd come in and there would be several uh, pages in an application you fill out that would come from things like common, you know, what do you like to do? What's mm -hmm. your hobbies? What's your pastimes? What do you, and, and then the goal sheets that we set, we set these goals for these relationships right. that we want to meet. And so all of that gets filled out in the application process. So that's all written down for everybody to see. And, and so the kids and the parents kind of feel the same. They come in at the same time for applications. Mm -hmm. The parent fills an application and said, hey, I'm going to be involved. When the case manager calls, I'm going to return phone calls in a timely manner or emails. I'm going to communicate with big brothers and big sisters and let you know my concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of our primary concerns is safety. I want to hear from the parent every month that I feel like my kid is safe. Right. I want to hear from the kid every month. I feel safe in this relationship. I want to know that that's a, that's a top priority for us. So parental involvement sounds like it's key that it's not just somebody take care of my kid because I don't have time. It's, Absolutely. I'm Part of this process. And, and if we don't tie the parents to it, we've missed out. Mm -hmm because we can't change someone in, in, in 30 minutes a, a week or, or two hours a week, depending on whether it's a site-based or community-based match, what life change happens when, when they start to see a, a better way uh, or, or what can happen right. and what can be, mm -hmm. and it gets reinforced at home. And so we really have to have parent involvement and parent buy-in and parents saying, yes, I want better for my kids than I have, and this is how I think I get it for them. Right. Now you mentioned the other side, the bigs or the volunteers, and I'm sure there's an application process through there screening, is in, a lot of things. Indeed, an application through. process, and, and uh, certainly a part of that is a background check. We want to make mm -hmm. sure that, that bigs are safe uh, for kids. If you are a site-based match, and that's what we would call someone who'd go to school. So oh, there are site-based matches, and they meet 30 minutes a week with their kid. And mm -hmm. so you might say, I could do that. I could go I have to the to el elementary school down the street here, and I could be there 30 minutes a day and do lunch with one of the, with the same kid every week. Mm -hmm. And so you would go on Tuesday of every week, if that's the day that you picked, and, and the kid there was a kid that was available that day, and you'd have lunch at the same time at the same school with the same kid every Tuesday. Uh, if you're a site-based match or community-based match, then you're going to go pick that kid up. So you're going to go to their house. You're going to oh, okay. tell their parents, hey, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You'll communicate with them, obviously. You'll take their kid and you'll go somewhere and you'll spend about two hours together. And uh, so that requires a, not just a background check, but a driving check. We want to know right. that you're transporting you know, you're this not, person in your you're car. You're transporting right? a precious <laughs> child in your car. You got to be careful. Mm -hmm. So there, there's some detailed background checks. There's uh, and then detailed information that we gather. And then again, we're doing the same thing with the, the big. We want to know what are your hobbies? What are your interests? We don't want a kid who wants to play video games matched with someone who wants to be outside and, and at the park playing Frisbee. Right. That's going to be a miserable match. They're not going to be happy together. Mm -hmm. If we can find people who like to be outside or people who like to fish or people and, and match those people again, we find that relationships go much more than the year that we ask them to commit to initially. Great. What about training? Somebody might say, well, I, I'd like to maybe try it, but I've never done this before. <laughs> Hazel Long is our community-based site manager and, and the person in charge of our training right now. And she does a phenomenal job. But she sits you down and walks you through scenarios. Mm -hmm. The best part is that you'll go through a 60-minute training as a big, but the greatest thing you have, the greatest asset you have is every month, the case manager is going to call you and follow up. And mm -hmm. any questions that you have, mm -hmm. if she didn't have the answer for, uh, I was talking to one of our bigs the other day and he was explaining a problem that he had. And I said, well, I said, I don't have the answer for that, but here's what I do. I can go back and talk to Hazel and find out if she knows. And if okay. she doesn't, we have 400 other agencies 
and, and over 2 million matches in the United States, I'd be willing to bet that someone has dealt with the same problem. And so through Big Brothers and Big Sisters National, we have a resource to go to to say, hey, help me answer this question. What would you do in this situation? And someone mm -hmm. says, I dealt with that, and here's what we did that worked, or here's what we did that didn't. Don't do this, or right. hey, do this. Well, this worked well for us. And so we have that resource that we get to give those people. So no one's on an island. No one's doing it by themselves. It takes a village, and so we like to work together. So the national organization is there for resources and support. They still allow you to do your own community-based needs, and you're not being dictated by national that you have to do it this way. Right. Now, we do have some things that we, you know, we get audited every year right. by national. They come mm -hmm. in and say, hey, we're the gold standard of mentoring, and here's why. We because we, we do A, B, C. And, and so now, th so that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do above and beyond that, that's great. You're welcome to that. But here's what we say you need to do. And so okay. they have some things they kind of, and and. It, but it's it's nice to be able to tell people, hey, when it comes to mentoring, we're the gold standard. So mm -hmm. we like national involvement. We like them being there for that resource. Yes. Well, I know you brought some pictures, and we could take a look at some of those uh, as we're talking. Let the audience we've been talking okay. about it. Let them kind of visualize what you have when we talk about big brothers, big sisters. So and if and I think to our first picture. Yeah, these mm -hmm. are so, these are some of our matches. They uh, this is a, a big and a little that have gone to a baseball game together. Um, and, and so that, that's something that we, one of uh -huh. the things we encourage bigs to do is not to spend a lot of money, especially early on, uh -huh. that you don't want to be viewed as the ATM. You don't want to be the person I'm always going to get a gift when yeah, this I'm person get a comes. Gift. Yeah. yeah, we encourage them not to do gifts until, you know, other than special occasions and make them small token gifts, mm -hmm. more sentimental value. So going to a baseball game would be a real treat right. uh, because there was going to be a little bit of money exchanged in that. But that was going to be a fun day for, for a big and a little to go to a baseball game. Here's... Uh, a match day where we matched uh, a big and a little for the first time. Oh. We do a serious picture and a goofy picture. Mm -hmm. That obviously is not the serious picture <laughs> right. uh, there. But that must be a special time when the little's excited, I'm going to have a big, and the big is saying, I'm finally going to meet my little. It, it is exciting at the same time. It's that, like, uh, what if I don't? I don't know that. Yeah, what do I say well, to this person? And so yeah. one of the things that we do is we give them a, a, a gift certificate to usually a place to either go get a cup of coffee or a Coke or an ice cream or a mm -hmm. bagel or a donut. Uh, give them a place to go sit down and have a conversation. And then we have a list of questions for the big to ask the little oh, okay. and a list of questions for the little to ask the big to kind of get them started to open that dialogue up. So, it's a little easier when you're in a community-based match and you're going to a school to sit down with someone. Mm -hmm. you got 30 minutes and part of it's lunch. Right. Uh, what's that? Oh, those carrots. That didn't look like, you know, and then yeah. you can start that easy. But uh, it's a little different when you're going to sit with someone for two hours for the, the first time. So another match? So another match here. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a, a Christmas party every year. So this is last year's Christmas party. Uh, all the bigs and all the littles come to the Christmas party. Everyone gets a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, Christchurch Orinogo has done a phenomenal job of putting that on for us for years and years and years and years. They just have invited all the littles, all the bigs, even the kids on the waiting list get to come. They get a gift and dinner and we play games together and have a great time. So that mm -hmm. was our Christmas party so last a lot year. Of peer support there among everybody involved. Right? Yes. And then here's another. Yeah, we, and we do two of those events a year. That's a great mm -hmm. comment. You know, we, we want bigs to be together with other bigs and littles to be with other littles. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another great resource that we have is we have each other. And so we, we network those. Another match uh, here in the office, we got a big and little together for the first time. And so again, another goofy picture mm -hmm. here where they're getting together for the first time and excited about going out and having that conversation, that first conversation. And I notice, of course, we have women as well as men working with them. You know, so it's both brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And it is. It's big brothers and big sisters. And here's a, obviously a birthday party mm -hmm. where uh, I'm not sure where you get a donut that large, no. but they found <laughs> One. And they're going to celebrate a birthday and have some donut together and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and spend the afternoon together. Great. So, uh, you're, is there a special need? Maybe more women than men? Or we there, typically find that we need more men than women. Okay. That women are. You may not find this hard to believe, Judy, but women are better volunteers than men. And so we <laughs> typically have women, adult women on the waiting list mm -hmm. and, and boys, children on the waiting list. And so what we're hoping to do is to build a list of both men and women mm -hmm. so that when kids come in, we can find good matches. Right. And to tie them together. So. Now, this looks like you're out in the community. <clears throat> we, uh, uh, the person actually taking the picture there in the uh, orange shirt mm -hmm. is Mike Brown. He is on our board. He is a phenomenal guy. What I love about Mike, Mike was a... Uh, little when he was a kid. His parents divorced and his mom signed him up as a little mm -hmm. and he became a little in Big Brothers and Big Sisters. When he got to college, he paid that forward and became a big and adopted a little. And then when he graduated college and moved and got a job, he, he took on another little. Mm -hmm. And then when he moved to Joplin, he joined the board at Big Brothers and Big Sisters. So he's on our board. 
The cool thing about Mike is Mike is still in connection with the person who was his big when he was a kid oh, nice. and with both of his littles. And so that's Mike. He's on the mm -hmm. board. Hazel is the the oh, woman next team. to him. Uh, she is our case manager right mm -hmm. now. And she's right now she's our only case manager. We're getting ready, like I say, in the process, hopefully of hiring a second one soon. And then the really good looking guy in the back <laughs> is me back there. This is a third Thursday. We went mm -hmm. down uh, and joined third Thursdays and set up a booth to get word out. We right. were in Joplin brand new in January. People didn't know we were back. And so uh, it was just our way of getting word out and so here yeah, again is hazel at third thursday mm -hmm. and she's our case manager she's wonderful she's having hip replacement surgery uh so she'll be she'll be down out the of the office for a while she'll be <laughs> site she'll still be on the phone and via email she'll still right. be working from home mm -hmm. on her laptop and here we are passing out some uh, pencils at, mm -hmm. at third thursday and so that's ryan one of our board member his son is there with me and, and we're just kind of meeting people in the street and greeting people and telling them about big brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. where we are and what we do and just making new friends and Here's Mike setting up uh, for, uh, boy, I think, I think it's a third see. Thursday right. again. Uh, oh, yeah, we had uh, uh, ice cream ice we cream gave away. Ice cream, so you blue money there. You're giving away they, some ice cream we, for we people. We gave away uh, 500 ice cream bars that Thursday wow. uh, in about an hour. Right. <laughs> they went fast. Sure. <laughs> we made lots of friends that Thursday. Dying that together. Now, we'll be talking about some of the events that you have coming up. Of course, bowling, I, we've heard about this for years. That continues to be one of the successful well, events. Bowl for Kids' Sake is one of our big fundraisers every year. We do it the first Saturday in March. Mm -hmm. Would love anybody watching this who is interested to get online and check that out. You can sign up online. You can get a team together. But team are made up of five bowlers. We ask right. every bowler to try to raise a minimum of $50. Mm. Obviously, if someone didn't raise their $50 minimum, we're not going to kick them out of the right. tournament. They still get to bowl, but that includes your shoes, that's your bowling, that's your t-shirt, that's your uh, swag bag that we like to give out when mm -hmm. we get there. It's uh, a slice of pizza for lunch, and then it's a great time. It's, uh, we have three flights, a, a morning flight that is typically about three-fourths full, and then our afternoon flight, we have the banks here in town have been great. we got banks that compete against each other and we'll fill about 28 lanes for that middle flight and it is cram packed in so the bowling alley. So you have a little alley. competition between companies. And <laughs> a competition between the, the, the banks there and then uh, we have an afternoon flight that goes and it's typically our shift workers, people who mm -hmm. worked in the morning who got off but want to support big brothers and big sisters and so uh, we would love to get churches involved, schools involved mm -hmm. uh, and just if someone says hey we got a team, we don't know who we want to bowl against, we can match you with somebody, we can get you out there but we would love to have some teams. So we'd love this, to have some MSSU students out there to bowl with us. So is this program errors in the first of the year, people looking forward to what to do in the spring. This will be posted information on your website. This and how will be, to get yes, this information out there and tying that together. Um, working, you mentioned some of the activities that students you do with the youngsters. You mentioned the schools. I want to talk a little bit about that because uh, people out in the community, maybe like you say, go to ball games. How do you work with the schools, the Joplin schools? We are starting with Joplin schools brand new in January, and mm -hmm. we're so excited about that. Bright Futures and, and Dale Peterson have been a wonderful resource for us, and, and uh, part of Bright Futures' mission is to connect with agents in town right. and part of our mission is to connect with kids and so it was a good fit and Dale and I went to lunch and, and met each other became instant friends and and business compartments partners at the same time mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna we, we will be in there we're doing what they call the lunch buddy program right. and so the kids will get a, a person adult volunteer who comes in each lunch with them every day every week at the school one day mm -hmm. a week comes every once a week but it'll be the same kind of match support that they get in the community. So once a month, there'll be a case manager who calls the kid mm -hmm. from the school, who calls the parents of the kid, and who calls the adult big who's going to meet with the kid and saying, are you safe? Are you, you know, what did you do this month to achieve your goals? And what are you doing? You know, what's your plans? And, and just kind of, and then, you know, what, what questions or comments or snide remarks do you have that we can help with? And, and how can we use our network to help you mm -hmm. uh, help the life of this kid? And so it's, it's kind of a cool thing. So this gives the youngster a presence of an adult during the lunchtime. Imagine they maybe they're in the classroom all day. Lunch is a chance to bring somebody else in they haven't met before. And it's a, and, and, and we, it's, it's kind of neat. It's, it doesn't seem like 30 minutes you get a whole lot done, but mm -hmm. over the course of the year, we have found that that, that that is a, a, a very impactful time over the life of and, and kids. It starts off, you know, surface type stuff always, but right. it can move into some really cool conversations. Now, do you find that if people <laughs> the, work with a child at lunch and then suddenly they're saying, well, maybe we could do some more, there's maybe they needed tutoring to study their math or something like that? Th and, and Joplin schools have a program like that. What mm -hmm. we, and, and we're excited about the possibility of, of that 
turning into some more of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're excited about is when kids start getting out of elementary school and it's not as cool to have an adult come and eat lunch right, with you in middle right. school or high school, that maybe we can transition some of those matches that started in the schools as a site-based match mm -hmm. to a community-based yeah. match and we can keep that relationship together. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you'll be able to reach quite a few, you said 100 or so students already to go in, in the first of the we, year. We have, yeah, they think uh, about 153 students they had last mm -hmm. year in what they call lunch pals, where they right. just kind of threw people together. They didn't really mentor those, you know, the, the, they, the kids needed some support and so they got them support. The schools mm -hmm. did what they could. Uh, so it, that's what's exciting is we're going to take the best of what they've already done and the best of what we have to bring to the table and marry that together. And I think it's going to be really life changing for kids and for teachers and for parents and for schools and for communities and for everyone. Mm -hmm. So working with the schools is an example of working with other organizations. Do you also network with other maybe agencies in town? And I mean, there's a lot of agencies that serve people. So if you see a need by talking to a child or a parent, you can network and talk to another agency. We do. In fact, I try to go to uh, as many chamber events as I can. I want to say mm -hmm. network in the community with, with our business leaders and right. partners uh, and, and get word out there. But at the same time, I, I try to be stay networked with other agencies. And so I have lots of contacts. I'm a part-time pastor in town, so I'm mm -hmm. also a part of JAMA, the Joplin Area Ministerial Alliance. Right. And so I have all those contacts and the agencies they work with. And so I feel like Big Brothers and Big Sisters kind of gets the best of both worlds. They get the best of the business relationships. They get the best of the, the community the civic support. relationships mm -hmm. and the other groups that are in town, the nonprofits. And, but yes, we love to refer. There's a group that meets uh, once a month and, and we talk about, so different agencies that work with children right. all get together uh, once a month and we have conversations and talk about how do we, I've got this kid and I need to get, th I need this help. And there, so there's other, well, we can help with this or we can help with that. And so mm -hmm. we kind of work together. So we, we refer each other to different agencies and things like that. It's not a competition. We're right. all out for the same thing. We so want what's best for the no kids. No duplication of services, basically. Right. People talking those right. terms. You know, you're and that's the nice that. thing about being together too, is then you know what mm -hmm. they're doing and, and mm -hmm. what's available and, and they know what you're doing and, and we're not trying to duplicate services either. That's a, another great point. So people are able to get more to help support that. Uh, fundraising, we mentioned your bowling. I know this past fall you had a beer event, I guess, for our viewers. I remember seeing the commercials, the public service announcements, Beer Fest. So let's explain that aspect of the fundraising. Beer Fest is uh, going to be the second, uh, the, it's going to be the second Saturday in September. It's, it's going to be the Saturday after Labor Day okay. weekend. So September the 8th, I believe that is. Uh, but we have uh, three breweries here in the area, one in Springfield and two here in Joplin. And they bring, this year we had 85 different craft beers mm. brought to Memorial Hall. We had uh, eight different restaurants here in town that brought food. And so you got to come in and sample food from places like Buffalo Wild Wings and Gasano's Pizza and then try it with, match it with different craft beers. And so part of your ticket when you get your ticket is a little mug that you get to, a sample mug that mm -hmm. you get to go around. And so they, you know, you say, hey, I'm going to go to the Gasano's tent and get pizza. Uh, what's a good match with that? And Which they might say, best, yeah. and so, and there were obviously people who didn't care as much about the food as they did. And there, mm -hmm. there were people who cared about the, the food more, but it was, it was a fun night. We had an auction and uh, a silent auction and then a live auction at the end. We had someone who had, who had donated some mopeds to mm. us and we donated a couple of mopeds off and, mm. and it was just a blast. It was a great night. Well, it sounds like something like that would take a lot of planning. You talk about two staff members. Do you have a lot of volunteers who put this together? <laughs> We have a great board uh, and we are always looking for volunteers. And so mm -hmm. you may want to be a part of Big Brothers and Big Sisters today. I don't know that I want to meet with someone on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but we, so we have these events that we do this Christmas party that's coming up in right. December. We got the bowl for kids sake. Uh, we've got beer fest. We're talking about maybe adding another fundraiser mm -hmm. uh, and those kinds of things. So we always have jobs. We would love to have someone who said, Hey, I'd like to come in in the mornings. I could be a receptionist and I could, I could answer mm -hmm. phones for a few hours every day or, mm -hmm. or a couple of days a week that would free that up. Uh, man, we would love to have that. I could come in and help with mail outs or I could scan documents or I could, you know, whatever. Right. <coughs> we would love to have those people volunteer. So we're, we're looking for volunteers, not just to be with kids, but volunteers to help in all areas. Now I know you have a website and I don't know if we've shown the website yet, if they have that available to take a look at it. Uh, when you go to it, a lot of information and resources available here. Yes. And that is www.joplinbigbro.org. Okay. And that's where you can find, of course, the basic about us. We've been talking about the upcoming events and you know how to give and support as well. So um, kind of looks like it's you know tying into the national theme, but specifically localized for what you do here. It, it yes, and and that's the the one thing I love about national. National is big about hey, we want all we want us to all look the same. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the colors and here's our logo and and don't deviate from this. 
you make it yours when you get it, but mm -hmm. but this has to be there, and, and I love that about you. So if you were to go on Big Brothers and Big Sisters national website, it would look a lot like our website. If you went on to Springfield's website, it would look a lot like our website or Kansas City or Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Kansas, or wherever you went. You'd find out that, hey, they all kind of have the same general theme, uh, but it's all local information. Now, you mentioned the person who had <coughs> been experienced elsewhere and came to Joplin. Do you find a lot of people, may, it's, we're a mobile society. Somebody moves into town and says, I did this when I lived in California. Can I get involved here? Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 and we learn new ideas that way, too. That, hey, you know, we did this one. And when I was in Big Brothers and Big Sisters here, this is what we did. Right. And so they bring ideas with them and, 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 and fun things to do with their matches that, that mm -hmm. maybe we hadn't thought of before. You've brought up some examples of, you know, the impact that it has on uh, the children <coughs> and the uh, mentors, you know, working with them, the, the adults. Uh, I imagine you could probably get a lot of testimonials where people could say, without big brothers, big sisters, I wouldn't have had this. Oh, absolutely. And, and one of the things we want to get added to our webpage that's not there yet is we want to get some testimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, again, being a new fledgling agency, we haven't had a chance to get a lot of that yet. But the older we get and the more established we get, we will add those testimonials because they're there. They're, they're, it's a life-changing thing. I know, you know, Mike will tell you his experience right. uh, as, as a little and as a big, it was life changing. And I'll tell you, as a story as a big, it was life changing. I have two daughters, both of them are in college in Texas, mm -hmm. uh, and they are both bigs in the Big Brothers and Sisters program, one in Waco and one in Abilene. Uh, life changing for them, for their littles. Uh, you know, when we had conversations while they're home for Thanksgiving about how uh, last day of school, we went and met them at school and did this and this and this and mm -hmm. took them, to, you know, and uh, we cried that we weren't going to see each other for the next week and that kind of <laughs> right. thing. So uh, they've made some really cool connections there as well. So we're recording on the campus of Missouri Southern. You welcome the university age students or the people who are still, you know, working in school to come help out you. Absolutely. In fact, I think that's a great time to start and, and to create that habit that will follow you the rest of your life. I started mm -hmm. when I was in college. Uh, I think the site-based program is a tremendous place for people who are busy. Uh, and most college, they don't have classes every day. Right. I, I know that because I went to college. It doesn't go eight to five and, every day. And they don't <laughs> always go when they have them, right, Judy? But they, they don't have them every day. And so mm -hmm. they can say, hey, I, I, my class schedule on Tuesday is light. I could do Tuesday. Or my class schedule on Wednesday is light. I could do Wednesday. And they could pick that day of the week that they could go and spend 30 minutes at a school campus near the mm -hmm. campus here. Uh, and what would be really cool, I think, is to get three or four uh, girls or three or four guys that say, hey, we'll carpool over there. And that way I only got to drive one. So I'm not adding any mm -hmm. gas money hardly. Uh, but once a month I could drive and I'll take three people with me and we'll go over to this campus. We'll all have the same day. We'll all have the same lunch period. We'll all go lunch and together. And we'll all with go them. and sit at a, at a table mm -hmm. with our, and, and, and share information together yeah. and, uh, and, and be a resource with each other as well. So if someone who's watching has tuned in and will say, how do I get in touch? What do I, you know, how do I reach you? What's, how do, what's the best way? <clears throat> the best way is our website, joplinbigbro.org. Mm -hmm. Go there and you can sign up there. Uh, okay. You can reach out and ask for more information. If you want to call our offices, you're welcome to do that. It's 626-9244. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm at Extension 1000. Hazel, if you're wanting to get involved, is probably a much better contact for that. I'm more <laughs> the big picture guy. Uh, and she's Extension 1001. But mm -hmm. uh, the voicemail will tell you all that. But we would love to have you go online and check that out and, and to sign up. And, and we'll call you back and get you plugged in. Uh, very quickly. So it sounds like you have a lot of possibilities for the future as you oh, move we do. into the we, new year. <laughs> a lot of growth is coming our way and we're getting ready to, to add Carthage public schools and then once we, it, that's our plan for 2018-19 mm -hmm. school years to add Carthage schools okay. and, and they're excited about it. We've already been talking to them uh, and then from there we'll hope to add Carl Junction and Webb City and then eventually into Neosho and Diamond and, and uh, Newton County grow and to grow this thing. Yeah, to keep growing. <laughs> All right. Well, Greg, I'd like to thank you very much for visiting with us today. On thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you the viewers for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then.